All right, let's take a look at how to construct a stem and leaf plot from some data. Um, I've got some numbers here. They're kind of random numbers. They could be pretty much anything. In this case, um, let's just say I stopped this many people on the street and asked them how old they were. And this was the ages that I got from the people that I asked. And I need to construct a stem and leaf plot from that. And on our stems, our stems go here, and our leaves go here. And the way this works, the stem and leaf plot, it's a way to make this information basically more concise. Um, my stems are going to be the tens place for these things. And so I've got some 30s, I've got some 20s, I've got some 50s, I've got some 40s, I've got some 60s. So it looks like my stems are going to be 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And now what I need to do is go through and find all of the 20s and list them here. But the way that I list them is I'm just going to put what's in the ones place here. And I also want to do this in order. So I'm going to start, I'm going to look and see if I have a 20 here anywhere. I don't have a 20. Do I have a 21? I've got a 21 here, and that's the only 21. So I'm going to put a 1 here. Because I'm putting the 1 in the leaves next to the 2, that basically means that I can look at this and know that somewhere in my data set I have a 21. So now let's see if we have any 22s. Uh, we've got a 22 here, and I've got a 22 here. Now because I had two 22s, I need to put two 2s. This counts for 22 this counts for 22. So right now this says I have a 21, a 22, and a 22 in my data set. So now we look for 23s. Do I see any 23s? I don't. 24s. Do I have any 24s? No. 25s? Nope. 26. Yep, I've got a 26 here. I'm going to put a 6. So I have a 21, a 22, a 22, and a 26. I have a 27, I've got a 27 here, so I'm going to put my 7 here. Uh, do I have any 28s? Nope, but I do have a 29. And those are all of the 20s. I've taken care of all of the 20s for my data set. And I've managed to do it by writing down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 digits as opposed to writing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 digits down. And so what we're doing is just making this a much more concise way to keep track of this data. So let's move on to the 30s. Do I have a 31? I do. I have a 31 here, so I'm going to put a 1 here. Make sure that your columns line up, that as you add numbers, they go into, into uh, good columns here. So let's see, do I have a 32? I do not have a 32. Do I have a 33? don't have a 33, but I've got a 34 here. So I'm going to put my 4 here. And I know you're going to say, hey, but there were 2s here. We're trying to keep track of how many 30s we've got. So I've got 131 and 134. So I've got two in my 30s column right now. Uh, 35, I've got 135. So I'm going to put the 5 here for that. Uh, 36, nope. 37, nope. 38. All right. So I have a 31, a 34, a 35, and a 38. And you see how I've got these lined up? Um, that means I can, I can easily see that I had more 20s in my data than I had 30s in my data. So let's look at the 40s now. Um, 40, nope. 41, nope. 42, no. But I do have a 43 here. 43. Um, have a 44. No 45s, no 46s, no 47s, but I have a 48. No 49s. Okay, so I'm done with my 40s. There are only three 40s in my data set. And I can easily see that by counting the number of leaves that I had three numbers that were in their 40s. 
Okay, so now we move on to the 50s. Do I have a 50? No. Do I have a 51? No, but I've got a 52. 53? No. 54? No. 55? Yes. And then the last number that I have here is a 65. So I was able to take all of these pieces of data and encode them exactly like this. And wow, did I not intend for it to, uh, to make that nice diagonal like that. Um, but one of the interesting things about a stem and leaf plot is that if you do it correctly, if you line up your columns neatly, if you flip it up on its side, doesn't that kind of look like the histogram that we would have for that data? Just imagine for a minute that we put a rectangle here. I'm drawing these very lightly so you shouldn't be able to see them too, too, uh, too darkly. There's a rectangle here, rectangle here. You could almost make a histogram using that stem and leaf plot with these being your categories and then how many things you have in each category stacked up. So it kind of gives us a concise way to keep track of the information and also it's a way to kind of compare how much we have in each of these different different categories. In this case, how many people were in their 20s? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. How many people were in their 50s? 2. And we can really visually see the difference between the 6 in their 20s and the 2 that were in their 50s. And again, it confuses people and it shouldn't confuse you. All we're saying is this is the tens place and each one of these is a ones place for something that we had. So we had a 21, a 22, a 22, a 26, a 27, and a 29. 31, 34, 35, 38, 43, 44, 48, 52, 55, and 65. And that took care of all of the data that we had up here. That is how to construct a stem and leaf plot from a set of data.